Here is a video on why the next Sonic game needs to get rid of the boost. Destroy it, retry it, completely eradicate it with no signs of it in the future. Sonic Frontiers has recently been released and in an interview, the director of the game, Morio Kishimoto, did express that he had interest in getting rid of the boost for a future Sonic game. When I started working on this game, I thought a lot about whether it would work or not and decided to hire boost. I'm still thinking of trying a Sonic game that doesn't use boost in my next game. So this got me thinking whether it really was time for the boost to retire itself or not and I truly think that now is the time. Hey beautiful humans, I'm Ryder CX and I think if anything, Frontiers have shown that a pivot is definitely needed in this franchise and I feel like this this pivot needs to eradicate the boost. But before you all get completely berserk on me, there's been a lot of great games that made good use of the boost. So to fully illustrate my point as to why I think the boost needs to be destroyed now, we gotta take a look back at how the boost came to be in the first place, why it was great for Sonic back then, but also why it's not so great for Sonic now. So it's not like Boost was a completely foreign thing to Sonic when it was first introduced. I mean, there are certain games that sort of made a bit of a use of it. In Sonic Heroes, for instance, there was a Rocket Excel that all the speed characters could do, which was kind of similar to the Boost, but not quite the form that we've come to know it as. The very first time that we truly saw the Boost implemented in a game that is very similar to the way that we see it nowadays was Sonic Rush. Sonic Rush was just a 2D platformer that came out right next to Shadow the Hedgehog, and it introduced this Boost mechanic, and the way that worked was really simple. You had a Boost meter that you could fill up by collecting rings, destroying enemies, performing tricks, you know, all that stuff. And as long as you had something in the boost meter, you were able to click a button and have Sonic or Blaze boost through whatever obstacles were in their way at an insanely higher speed than what their base speed would be. This was a really fun addition in Sonic Rush, and it is by far one of my favorite 2D Sonic games of all time. It took that classic Sonic gameplay, but basically gave it a higher stakes in terms that, wow, you're going so much faster than you were able to in the past, and it truly added a new dimension to Sonic gameplay that we had not seen before. A couple years rolled by and after the release of Sonic 06, there was this really dark aura that was presiding above the Sonic franchise and it desperately needed something new and amazing and interesting to really just pull Sonic out of this dark place that 06 put him under and thus we got Sonic Unleashed which was a game that adapted the boost formula into a 3D setting. This was a pivoting point that the franchise absolutely needed back then. After numerous games that were considered mediocre or terrible or you know what, all the above, Sonic Unleashed presented itself as bright, colorful, ambitious, fascinating, and really just an overall rebirth of Sonic that we desperately needed to pull Sonic out of this rut. I remember when the footage of Savannah Citadel leaked and I could not take my eyes off of it. It was exciting, it was thrilling, it was heart-racingly beautiful. You had Sonic in this 3D environment and all of a sudden he was going at 10 times the speed that Sonic Adventure could only wish to reach. Bursting through lines of enemies, quick stepping past obstacles, fleeing himself into the air multiple times within seconds. Sonic Unleashed truly looked like the next generation Sonic experience we were craving for. And when I got my hands on it, the boost gameplay felt like everything I ever wanted. The game itself was not received pretty well unfortunately, not only due to the fact of, well, um, the majority of the game, but the boost formula itself while impressive, did have a lot of room to improve on. It was fast, but clumsy to control. Its levels were vast, but absolutely brutal in design. And there was just something about this gameplay that I think just needed to be toned down a little bit just to make it feel that much more immersive for players. And so the next step in the boost formula evolution was Sonic Colors. Sonic Colors basically took the good parts of Unleash and made a full game from it. So if you combine the fast and drilling gameplay of Sonic Unleash with more colorful and creative levels in a 3D Sonic game, and you get yourself one of the most positively received Sonic games of all time. The impact of this game was monstrous despite being a Nintendo exclusive, as it seemed like Sonic was finally pivoting into a direction that was good and that was getting him back in the good graces of the general video game public. And there was no unnecessary baggage to drag him down this time around, no alternative gameplay style, no convoluted storylines to really drag the narrative down. It was a pure 3D Sonic experience and people were eating it up at the time. Retrospectively, this game does get some criticism now for its excessive 2D sections and also it's less than thrilling narrative that has not aged the slightest bit well. No! 
but still a well-regarded entry and a remaster has definitely seen some success. This upward trajectory would only continue with Sonic Generations, the next title, which was a game crafted to build the boost formula up to be able to stand side by side with classic 2D Sonic gameplay. You have this game that's divided into two halves. One half was a tried and true formula that everyone loves when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog, classic fast-paced 2D momentum-based platforming, standing side by side with what Sonic Team was trying to sell now as the definitive Sonic experience, the boost formula. This game took the best bits of Unleashed and Colors and combined them to make the finest presentation of the Boost formula yet. It had an even better balance of 3D to 2D gameplay, it had the fast paced feel of Unleashed, and it also had the platforming focus of Colors. You combine all that with the nostalgia infused worlds of Sonic Generations you burst through and you get one of the best Sonic titles of all time. Sonic Generations set a standard in this franchise that arguably is still the standard to this day. And that is because from here on out, the Boost really wasn't going to get itself many more flowers. So many years after Sonic Generations, we got a game called Sonic Forces. And Sonic Forces, something changed. A very drastic thing happened with this game that completely eradicated the momentum that the Boost formula was able to generate for the franchise up to this point. I mean, we do have to think about the fact that games like Sonic Lost World and Sonic Boom did come out before this game and they completely chipped away at that momentum as well. But Sonic Forces felt like the final nail in the coffin that really gave Sonic Team and Sega a wake up call. You look at this gameplay, it really doesn't look that different from Sonic Generations, but when you play it, you realize that the levels are not only significantly shorter, but there's abundance of automation that just wasn't there before. And the lack of creative platforming that Generations had basically set the standard for was shoved into your face 24-7 as you played this game. Forces was a massive disappointment when it came to the boost formula, let alone every single other aspect of the game. It truly felt like they took what the boost formula did well and just de-evolved that into a basic mindless 3D Sonic simulator. Later. And it was just so disappointing to play through after all the goodwill that they had developed up to that point. So with the release of Sonic Forces, Sega and Sonic Team would again take a lot of time to go back to the drawing board and really figure out what to do next with Sonic. And lo and behold, we got what was called Sonic Frontiers. Sonic Frontiers is definitely a big pivoting point for this franchise, but it didn't pivot the franchise completely as the boost formula was still a very big part of this game, but it was utilized in a very different way. First off, we do have the actual classic boost formula levels in this game still. They're under the guise of cyberspace levels, but they're absolutely f terrible. Like, there's really no use to discussing them. It pretty much is more the same stuff as the Kings of Forces, except the boost feels more underwhelming than it usually does. The level designs are really not that great for the most part, and it just doesn't feel great to control. If anything, this game really showed me that Sonic Team and Sega really were not focused on that classic boost experience that we've all come to know and love up to this point. But the big focus of Frontiers was the 3D open world that it marketed itself as, or should I say 3D Open Zone. Sonic Frontier slowed things down. It gave Sonic the ability to freely roam around an open space and traverse it as he pleases. There is a boost button here, but it really doesn't feel like a huge aspect of the game anymore. It really is just a button that's used to speed Sonic up in areas that otherwise would feel very, very difficult to traverse through in a timely manner. Plus, Sonic wasn't able to just simply boost through enemies anymore, so it wasn't even all that powerful at the same time. It does not surprise me in the least bit that the director considered axing the boost because besides the Cyrus space levels, the boost really does feel non-existent in this game. It's simply a method to speed Sonic up in the game and isn't really contributing to the gameplay all that much besides traversal reasons. So now that we've had Sonic Frontiers, where exactly do we go from here and why do I truly believe that the boost formula needs to be eradicated? It's basically what I just said, the boost formula really doesn't serve that much of a purpose in this new direction that Sonic is going in. In fact, I would argue that the boost formula kind of holds Sonic back in this new direction because it doesn't really add that much to the platforming experience. The boost formula is simply a button used to speed Sonic up, but it doesn't make the gameplay all that interesting. What I feel would make the gameplay ultimately that much more interesting and that much more fun with the boost formula when it comes to a game like Frontiers is bringing back the spin dash and you need to look no further than how they utilize the spin dash in Sonic Adventure to really see why this kind of game would benefit so much from a spin dash. The spin dash does work in a very similar way to the boost formula now in that you just have to click a button and Sonic will immediately speed forward. However, you're able to charge the spin dash to go as fast as you want it to and using the spin dash whether it be in repeated motions to get up a building or charging it and releasing it to go through an area at split 
doing speeds in the nick of time, the spin dash has much more flexibility that would be much more useful in an open world setting like this than the boost formula does. There's so much potential in being able to use a spin dash to truly break the game's geometry and make Sai go to places that you honestly couldn't even think to get to, at least in as creative of a way with the boost formula. With the boost formula, the game still needs to be so controlled in its level design. I mean, you literally have walls that are designated for Sonic to travel up in Frontiers. But in Sonic Adventure, you could travel up any wall that you please as long as there was some kind of like ground that you could travel up on. Doesn't that sound so much more exciting and so much more adventurous than what Frontiers gave us with the boost formula? I think the boost formula is something that really held back Sonic Frontiers from being a truly great 3D open world experience. Not to mention the momentum that the boost formula really does not have at this point. The spin dash has that. And you need to look no further if you want a modern example than the Sonic Speed Simulator as that game is a perfect example of how the open world formula could benefit so much from a spin dash compared to the boost formula. And that is my TED talk on why I think the boost formula needs to go away and why I think it's time to bring back the spin dash because Sonic Frontiers is a very successful game. It's sold almost 3 million copies in a short time it's been out. There is no way they're not going to make another game like this. And so I am proposing that it really is time to say goodbye to the boost formula and give the spin dash a chance to really elevate the experience that I know it can with the open world formula. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you believe that the boost formula should stay or do you believe it's time for it to go? Let me know why why not. If you're itching for more sign content, let me know what kind of questions you want me to answer in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your feedback and just uh yeah, this is Riders riding out.